So officially, uh, welcome again and thanks uh, for joining us in this second part of the little webinar series under the umbrella of the European Theatre Lab, which is dealing with social media communication for theatres. Um, and as Amy said, uh, one of the purposes of the European Theatre Lab is uh, to experiment and to find new formats uh, in communication and in uh, interaction, in co-producing uh, and uh, of course, also on stage with the digital techniques. Um, so, um, yes, we are experimenting a little bit. And that's why we, are, we have chosen this new format today to be with you on a more personal level and to show our faces to you as well. <laughs> so, um, here we are. And um, I am sure that most of you are quite familiar with using the channels and using them professionally that we are talking about today. Nonetheless, there are some which are new and are getting more and more important, um, uh, especially Snapchat. And I must admit that I am not a social media expert myself, so I will learn something too today, I suppose. Um, and uh, we will have the chance later to um, communicate and to interact uh, if there are any questions. Um, but now Amy will uh, tell you what you have to expect and what we are going through and then we will start immediately. Okay, well thank you very much Maren. Um, yes, just as a quick introduction, I'm a communications consultant and I work with a variety of um, companies uh, and cultural organizations. Um, now everyone struggles with social media. Um, these are a lot of these tools are very new for many people. Some are familiar, like Facebook, we all know that, um, but others like Snapchat um, <laughs> uh, are still new and a bit strange. Um, and so in terms of today's format, um, what I want to do is lead you through a presentation um, for the first half of the webinar, um, just basically to give you a basic uh, overview of um, the best tools you can use for visual storytelling. Um, so I'll, uh, switch the screen and you'll see this presentation and only hear us. And once that's concluded, then um, uh, as Maren said, we can take your questions and um, really look at examples that get us excited, um, that point the way um, for the theater world. Okay, so now I'll just switch screens. One moment, please. Um, and at this point, I would also like to mention that um, we're doing this on Google Hangouts, um, and so sometimes there's a slight lag of one or two seconds. Um, that's perfectly normal. It doesn't mean anything's wrong. That's just how it is. Great. Um, so as we mentioned, this is the second, this is the second um, webinar in a three-part series. Um, let's just take a step back to remember why we're here. Um, as Mon said, uh, European Theatre Lab is all about experimentation. Experimentation also learning, learning new skills. So we created this series so that theater communicators um, could have specialized training um, so that they could learn about these new tools and really become in-house experts at their theaters. Um, and so that way they could maybe even work with the creative departments um, to learn how to use these new tools um, and especially uh, to use these new tools to reach new audiences um, because many audiences are uh, online, many of them live online, <laughs> especially certain groups. Um, yeah, so we need to uh, really gain mastery over these tools. And just to take a step back, um, in the first webinar, we looked at foundations of social media. Um, so yeah, we basically provided a broad overview. Um, today we'll be looking at visual storytelling tools. So how do I tell stories on social media? Um, and in the last webinar, we'll talk about the nitty gritty, um, you know, the daily work involved in running a good social media campaign. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, today we're talking about uh, storytelling. And we're going to go through each channel to use. There are a number of them. Some are familiar, some are less familiar. Um, but I want to make sure we go through all of them so that you've seen them, you know how, what to call them, um, maybe even have how to make them yourself. And then um, we'll move on to best practices. OK, um, so the first point is, of course, a little bit obvious. Um, what is visual storytelling? It is telling a story with visuals. Um, <laughs> it's kind of obvious, but still it, it bears repeating. Um, so how do we do this? Um, There's certain. Uh, images that really can move us, um, an image that tells a story um, basically on its own. Um, and another way is to use text image combinations. Um, now the text image combination is really um, the most uh, common tool uh, to use on social media. And I also want to mention um, that as theater communicators, we all know the power of, uh, the, the power of imagery. 
Um, this is uh, why we're talking about visuals, um, because theater is primarily a visual medium. Um, we all know that um, theaters already produce very high quality images uh, with professional photographers. And the idea um, is that we can uh, not only use the high quality professional images, but also use these new tools, um, which might even look unprofessional or amateurish, um, but can still move people. So the idea is uh, to learn how to use them. Okay. Um, so in terms of the photo-based um, tools we can use, there are three main kinds, images, uh, memes, and also GIFs. Um, now in terms of images, oh, uh, excuse me. Um, in terms of images, um, of course not images, uh, not all are the same. There are a few factors that can make images particularly compelling. Um, images that show uh, the authentic world or are very relevant to your culture, or especially have uh, humans at the center. Um, there are also a lot of images that use basic storytelling tools, um, like have, uh, for example, like ar archetypes. Um, there are, you know, these classical archetypes. Some people talk about twelve archetypes. Um, you know, where in an image you can see a hero or a villain, um, or a lover, or something like that. Um, and as a general rule, uh, when you have images, use them as much as possible. Um, the internet basically thrives on imagery. Um, it's proven to, images are proven to be much more effective than just text. This even uh, goes for Twitter. Twitter is uh, really a word-based medium. However, even um, posts or tweets that use photos are shared much more widely. Um, I also want to mention at this point that each theater will likely already have a clearly defined visual style and aesthetic. Um, so the key is to make sure that you take this aesthetic and adapt it um, for each channel. It's not just enough to take your marketing materials um, uh, and upload them online. Uh, we know that intuitively, again, um, but it bears repeating as we go on. Just because, you know, in everyday life, uh, when you're working and have a lot to do, um, you might be tempted to just upload images you already have instead of adapting them um, to the channels that you, um, that you should. Okay, uh, one more um, thing to mention about images. And we know of Instagram as the primary site for um, high quality photos or for basically photographs. Um, we'll get to that later because Instagram also uses video um, and that's an important aspect. Um, so I won't address that quite yet. Okay, so the first thing I'll move, I'll, uh, excuse me, the second thing I'll talk, discuss is um, memes. I'm sure you've seen these a million times. Um, you probably know what um, they're called, a meme. Uh, is from the Greek for mimetic, so um, to imitate something. Um, and it refers to these text image combinations that you see all over the internet, especially on Facebook. Um, here's one example. <laughs> so um, you might recognize this from SpongeBob. Um, <laughs> uh, as you can see, uh, this is very silly. Um, that's the point of memes. Um, it's perfectly fine to think they're silly and fun. Um, but I would like to point out that even though it's silly, um, it shows how many internet users take these images um, and then they create a little story about them. Uh, people show enormous creativity um, just in taking images and adapting them basically in an infinite amount of ways. Um, so I think that memes shouldn't be discounted, uh, especially because humor is generally very important um, uh, for social media channels. Um, it depends, of course, on the institution, um, but humor, humor is generally speaking um, a good thing um, yeah, and it's also uh, a sign of progress when institutions um, like cultural organizations uh, use humor on the internet just like everyone else. Okay, and now we'll move on to the next kind of video-based tool, uh, excuse me, um, photo-based tool, um, GIFs. You've probably seen these as well. Um, it's quite easy to create your own. Um, a GIF stands for Graphics Interchange Format, and it's a series of image. Um, we'll go to one example. Okay, <laughs> um, so maybe you've uh, felt like this before. Um, I'm sure we all have, you know, for example, at the end of the season. Um, uh, basically making this kind of image uh, or making a kind of GIF is very, very simple. Um, I'll just go back to this site. Yeah, you just go to um, sites like Giphy, uh, choose your three to five best images, um, and then you can really begin to create a, a, a little video. Um, think about taking um, production photos. Uh, take the three or five best or three or five images which show one scene. Um, you can post this uh, 
then on your own website or in other um, articles that are otherwise too text heavy. Um, you can even add captions to add humor, uh, to comment, um, add analysis. Um, yeah, basically, uh, GIFs um, are important, and we wanted you to know how to um, to use them because um, often because uh, they're very easy to make, and um, people also just basically like them. Um, there's a lot of video content online, and often it just um, sort of distracts the viewer, whereas GIFs uh, really can enrich your content. Okay, so and now we can move on to um, channels that we know a bit better. Um, sorry, one channel we know a bit better. <laughs> um, okay, so the two next channels I'd like to talk about are um, Instagram and Snapchat. And um, both of these combine images, uh, so static images, photos, and videos. Um, now the end effect is very, very different. Um, so I'll start with Instagram, and I'll call it the anti-Snapchat. And um, it is basically um, <laughs> the opposite of Snapchat in many ways. Um, and since Snapchat is uh, new and, as Mon said, a little bit uh, difficult to use at the beginning or very uh, confusing, um, I'll briefly discuss Instagram and then spend more time on Snapchat. Okay, so we've probably seen a lot of Instagram accounts. Um, Instagram, uh, a good high-quality high Instagram account generally has high-quality professional images. These are highly curated. Um, they're filtered. Um, it's a view of the world uh, that corresponds to the Instagrammer's particular aesthetic. Um, so successful Instagram accounts generally show a number of characteristics. For example, um, okay, they have gorgeous imagery, generally speaking. Um, there are generally a few topics that they, that they choose. Um, so they have consistent subject matter. Um, and they also have an identifiable palette. Often, if you look at just a number of pictures, um, as in someone's Instagram stream, you notice that, okay, um, this theater uses a lot of red, or this person uses a lot of um, pink and blue, or um, pale tones, or uh, neon colors. Um, it's very important to have this identifiable aesthetic. Okay, um, and just um, as a, on a side note, um, Instagram uh, is basically in heavy competition with Snapchat now. Um, so that means that they're introducing a lot of uh, functions that Snapchat has. Um, there's more video content. Um, you can post short videos, about three to 60 seconds. Um, and they've also created a, um, a feature called Instagram Stories, where you make stories that are basically very similar to Snapchat. Um, We'll get into the details of that later. Um, as I said, there's a competition between the two companies, so it gets uh, a little bit complicated. Um, <laughs> but I think for most theaters, um, the main Instagram features, um, so photos plus short videos, will be the most relevant in their daily work. Also, um, once we're done with this section, we'll look at a number of Instagram examples. OK. So <laughs> hopefully you can um, start to get a sense of Snapchat. And um, Snapchat is, as I said, um, now, now I can say that Snapchat is the anti-Instagram. Um, and it's even more than that. It's um, unlike all of the other social media channels. Um, most media are basically about openness, about sharing, about showing off your best side to the world. Um, and they're also about permanence. Generally, you post something um, with the intention of having it there forever. Um, you can delete things, of course, generally on, uh, or hopefully <laughs> on most media, um, but it's really about having this permanent, uh, idealized view of yourself for the world. Snapchat is the opposite, about that, is, is the opposite of that. Um, Snapchat is intentionally unfiltered. It's uncurated. It's about these authentic, fleeting moments in life. Um, it's also about communicating with a group. Um, we'll get to the features uh, in a moment, but it's generally it's even a little bit difficult to find people. It's difficult to start to use it. And so it feels like an elite uh, or, excuse me, exclusive private thing. Um, that's probably one reason why young people like it so much, because it's where their parents aren't. At this point, parents are on um, Twitter, they're on Facebook, and they can monitor everything. Um, in Snapchat, you really can't monitor things. Uh, Okay, and just to um, give a little more of an overview, I want to look at um, two aspects in depth, the name and the logo. Okay, the name, snap, uh, snap judgment, snapshot. We know what this is. It's when you capture one moment. 
basically on Snapchat, um, what you see is a collection of pictures and videos, and each picture or video crystallizes one moment in time. And then good Snapchat users can thread these together um, to create a sequence of visuals, uh, and basically you create this chain of moment, a chain of moments, and that is your story. Um, so from one perspective, oh, uh, excuse me, um, and then I wanted to talk about the logo. Um, as you see, the logo is a little ghost. Um, that's intentional because content is intended to disappear. Um, some content can disappear within a few seconds. Um, some content disappears after 24 hours. But the idea is that it happens live, um, and you can't record it. Um, so in that sense, Snapchat is actually a little bit like theater. It's about being live. Um, and being impermanent. Um, and also through the nature of the channel, it creates a very intimate connection with the audience. Now, in other ways, Snapchat is not like theater, um, <laughs> or like most theater in, the, in, any, in any case. Um, Snapchat seems very unrehearsed. It's a little bit like cinema verite in this regard. It seems like life. Um, it's about showing uh, things that happen every day, the boring, the unexpected, the unplanned, even the unpolished things. It's also about fun. Um, there are a lot of funny filters that you might have seen where people have things like a rainbow tongue or a silly bear face. Um, Snapchat is really, really about fun. Uh, it's not about uh, you know, presenting a good, uh, good side to a potential employer or showing off your new vacation, uh, showing pictures from your fancy vacation or anything. It's really just about um, fun and those intimate connections. Okay, and now we can move on to who's using it. First of all, everyone knows that a lot of teenagers are using it. Um, that's why we're talking about it today, because it's a really important, um, basically one of the most um, popular uh, social media channels for teenagers, um, for all of these reasons we've discussed. Um, and so to reach them, uh, it's one of the best tools to at least understand. Um, and that's why, uh, a lot of figures and uh, media, large media corporations are on it already. Um, for example, there's a, a discover function, um, and that's where um, large corporations like uh, CNN and also magazines like uh, People Magazine, Cosmopolitan, where they produce daily content for this. Um, this is all part of their effort to reach younger viewers. Also, public figures, um, like many celebrities, uh, Michelle Obama, um, for example, is one of the most popular um, people on Snapchat and also large companies um, and consumer brands. So basically, anyone trying to reach young people are there. Um, now, Maren and I have looked through, um, <laughs> done a lot of research, um, and uh, I'm afraid to say that arts and cultural organizations haven't really discovered it yet. Um, so we think this uh, gives uh, theaters, um, and especially the European Theater Lab, a huge opportunity, um, just because uh, it's uncharted terrain. OK. Here's one example, um, one best practice example. Uh, at this point, I also want to note that, um, as I mentioned, it's impossible to record Snapchat uh, content. It's actually illegal. Um, for that reason, in order to see what's going on Snapchat, you literally have to join it and find people to follow. Uh, Maren and I are happy to recommend uh, people to follow. Um, and view every single day, or once in a while at least, to see what people are posting. Um, uh, we, we looked on YouTube, for example, um, you can see, uh, if you go to YouTube, you can find a few videos, um, that show some Snapchat, uh, content, but it doesn't give a full picture. To get the full picture, you really have to join and check it out for yourself. Um, but in any case, uh, here's one, uh, arts organization, which is really doing a great job. This is LACMA, that stands for the LA County Museum of Art. Um, they've won, uh, a lot of awards, uh, for their Snapchat presence. Um, so, for example, here you can see one function. What they do is they take, um, <laughs> yeah, they take art and then add uh, funny captions. Um, so you can see, for example, on the right, um, you have this painting and the hashtag is dad bod. This is a little joke in America um, for, <laughs> refers to, um, um, yeah, that a lot of, uh, to the fact that a lot of men uh, gain weight once they have children, it's called the dad bod. Um, so as you can see, it's, it's just a little joke. Um, it's just a way to, uh, keep younger viewers engaged um, and also to show off, um, yeah, to show off their permanent collection, um, but with a very, very innovative uh, media. 
Okay, and now we'll go um, quickly tell you how to use it. Um, as we said, uh, you definitely want to just create an account. Um, and also, Snapchat is very, very private. So you can be on Snapchat and follow people, and nobody needs to know. And then what you have to do is you have to find people to follow. These are all called friends. Um, we should note that there's no search function. If there's a theater you want to follow or any organization, you have to have the name and enter the full name exactly as it is. And then you request that you can become friends with the person, and then it needs to be approved. So um, I'm saying this so just so you can see that it is really about this tight circle. It's not about openness. Um, so once you have this list of people, then basically every day you can see um, what their new content is in your friends list. And you can also explore the features. Um, I mentioned this media content that's under the Discover feature. Um, a lot of, as I said, a lot of uh, big media company are getting into that. Um, there are also features like the filters, uh, so these you know, silly faces and whatnot. Um, but the idea is to just go through and uh, experiment and also just even ask people um, how to use it. Uh, many people do have problems with it, um, so just, just join and try. Okay, now I just want to um, quickly summarize. Okay, um, so we already discussed it, uh, the fact that most theaters already produce um, really high quality um, professional imagery. Um, the key is to use the imagery to actually create a story whenever appropriate. This will become more clear when we look at the examples. Um, for example, when you post a photo on Instagram, use the caption um, to say something unexpected or um, uh, to add detail that the viewer might not see otherwise. This is how you can help create a story. Um, just experiment. Create GIFs, uh, create memes, uh, pass them around. Um, it's all about experimenting and trying to use a different voice, um, a voice that is generally more appropriate for social media and can show also um, the theater uh, or the organization from a different side, um, show a little more authenticity or a look behind the scenes, maybe humor. Okay, and then we get to Snapchat. Um, as I mentioned, this really is uncharted territory. Um, this provides a major opportunity for theaters, especially because um, all you need for Snapchat is a phone. You need a smartphone and the app you don't need any equipment. Um, so it's a great way to start experimenting to produce this video content. Um, and yes, there are risks involved, but on the other hand, uh, the content will disappear within a day. So it's a great way to um, uh, try something out, um, to work with the other departments, um, to really show that the theater sector can provide leadership in this field. Because as, as we said, um, Theaters and uh, museums, uh, other organizations just aren't on Snapchat yet, and that's where we find young people. Um, so it is a good chance for us uh, to really push the boundaries, um, to show that we can do that. Um, theaters have the creativity. The idea is um, for the PR and communications departments um, to master the tools um, and to work with other departments uh, to try to make the new medium, um, especially Snapchat, more creative. Okay, great. Well, now we're wrapping things up. And as we said, um, so far the discussion has been a little more abstract. And now we will, um, now you'll see us again, and we will go back to, um, we will go back to some real world examples. Here we are. <laughs> so uh, now we're back. Um, yes, so now, um, Mon uh, found a number of wonderful examples, so maybe we can um, go through them and then um, talk about the principles of what makes something work, what makes something doesn't uh, not work, um, why that sometimes doesn't matter, <laughs> and so on. Yeah. Okay. Um, just let me, um, okay. Here we are. Yeah. I'm sure most of you are using Instagram very professionally already, um, and. Uh, which, but um, which one would you like? Uh, I'd like to, to, to go to the Residenz Theater first, please. Okay. But I would like to show you one example that I found really compelling, um, the Residenz Theater in Munich. I think they, they're doing a great job uh, on their Instagram account um, because what you see here, you see a selection of really great photos 
and you see also they are curated in a certain way i will uh, explain how and uh, also they are covering uh, certain topics um, instead of um, po just posting randomly um, it may look a little bit random nonetheless uh, on the first in the first place but i think there is a, a good concept behind it for example um, let me just uh, show you um, of course you see, for, first off, the, the colors, as, as Amy said, um, sticking to, to, certain to a certain color concept makes the, the whole impression much stronger. Um, so I'm not sure if, if the Residenziata uses filters, but um, uh, it looks like they do. But um, what they also do, they um, always or very often have these, uh, uh, this uh, it's crooked. It's on a. It's 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 not it's not straightforward, uh, but it's it's kind of um, yeah. It, it just uh, going to the side on the photos. Um, not always. Oh, anyway, how do I come back here? Uh, uh, just one on. moment. Uh, sorry for the delay. Just um, sometimes when sorry. you flip back and, and forth. Uh, no, I just wanted to, to to go back to the overview. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just here we are. Yeah, here okay. we are. So you, they, they often have that. You see it here, then you see it here again, then you see it here again, and there are some more. Even here, with such an abstract, which I found great to have an abstract to to tell a story, uh, and the text says after the rehearsal is before the rehearsal <laughs> so um it's it's a great photo first showing nothing or just making people curious and it's also covering one topic that is in my opinion the most uh, important and that is behind the scenes and of course behind the scenes can be um can be a lot of things it can be um showing rehearsals it can be um this one, for example, one of my favorites, we are ready for Macbeth, the blood has been delivered. So um, this is also a good example of behind the scenes. Um, but it, all, it can, of course, also be uh, showing actors getting their makeup or having a set design built up. Or also like this one, another great abstract part of the Set design of uh, Die bitteren Tränen der Petra von Kant, um, which is a, a great, uh, great opportunity to, to show a great picture and then to announce the next uh, dates of the, of the shows. So, um, this is one topic uh, behind the scenes. The other topic is um, the building. Here again, you see it's um, not straightforward the, the style of the photo is again uh, in the typical way they have it um, and again and i also want to point out um that they have a good joke in the caption um in the caption it says um residence theater uh, in the snow um but they use a uh, the shorter form for residence uh, so it's almost a little joke uh, it's mm -hmm. like a cuter way of describing it um, so that's another example where they show not only the aesthetic vision mm. um, and just very strong um, visual point of view, uh, but also show um, a humorous uh, human side. All right. So um, the building is one topic, the, uh, as I said, um, uh, which is important, of course, because you want to make a connection to that building that people go to and where people work and live. Um, so, in order to, to make people identify with what's going on there, um, it's important to show good pictures of, of uh, behind the scenes and of the building itself. So, you can go through these. Uh, they're really great, uh, doing a great job at, at Residenz Theater, I think. Um, then, of course, you have um, the topic when <laughs> you have some new merchandise or here, yeah, set is being built up or something like that i mean i'm sure you know all that i just wanted to to show you how um great they're doing this in in munich 
And another topic, um, could we switch to show then, please? Uh, of course. One moment. So, um, yeah. Uh, Shalbuna, um, which one? Um, the merchandise. Um, that we have the advent calendar and also this. Um, uh, we have this one, yeah. Or maybe can we can go to the general uh, overview. Um, yes, yes, one moment. Yes. Yeah, go to the overview now. Or maybe we should show this one first. Yeah, I should show this okay. one first, maybe. Um, yeah, as we pointed out, um, when you do uh, a live stream on Google Hangout on air, there is often um, a slight lag. So for that reason, we try not to switch screens too much. Mm -hmm. um, so please forgive us if there is a lag. Go to the main or um, go to the main page. No, no, let's play this one. First. Okay. So let's this play is, this one. This is an example of, of a fair. A, a small video on Instagram where the set design of a guest performance of the festival is being built up. And instead of just showing a, a picture or a series of pictures, they were, were doing a little video, um, which is quite funny. So, can go to the main, please? Um, yes. Okay, I hope everybody can see it. Now we're on the main side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um, as I said, uh, merchandise can be a, a very interesting um, topic to communicate. Uh, for example, Chao mm -hmm. Bühne Berlin is uh, working a lot with these quotations from, uh, from their plays. Um, and uh, um, I just want to point out, uh, sorry, Mara, for the, inter yeah, no <laughs> for the interruption, yeah. I can't resist. Um, uh, this this one um, uh, cotton tote bag. Um, uh, so in the in the caption, it said that um, that uh, some that an audience member actually submitted this picture. Um, the real quote is, uh, "Being ready is everything." Um, however, they adapted it for um, Berlin slang, saying, uh, "Being drunk is everything." Um, so anyway, um, so that's another example of not only uh, humor. Um, but also uh, actual th theater content, and also um, using their audience. Um, this was actually submitted by an audience member, so it shows that they're really striving uh, to engage with their audience on Instagram. Okay, sorry. And Next of course, on. things like that are also shared on Facebook, and I think it's it's clear that these uh, these gens are are interacting and and um, yes, providing the same content sometimes uh, on on different channels. Um, to reach people in different ways. Um, yes, but I what what I wanted you you have lots of examples of uh, merchandise uh, promotion, but I, what I wanted to show you is a little video, or actually I'm not sure if it's not only a GIF. Um, here again, tote bag promotion, <laughs> and here they were they were promoting the tote bags for the for the festival, and I hope this will work. Because it's it's a funny little um, it is a funny little yes <laughs> I think it's just a gift maybe only two or three pictures um, mm -hmm. or maybe yes, or maybe it's a, or maybe it's a video but I, I'm not sure uh, at least it's it's just fun um, and uh, yeah makes makes it a little bit more alive. <laughs> Yes, and this is a great um, example to illustrate the point that I made earlier about um, the video function on Instagram. Um, because as I said, uh, it's possible to have a video um, between 3 and 60 seconds. However, nobody wants to watch a long video on Instagram. Um, people don't click on them, they don't like them. Um, however, they do like these little, <laughs> um, these little animations, uh, which are generally just funny. Um, it takes two seconds, um, and also it doesn't use up a lot of data on phones. Uh, that's something that uh, often needs to be um, acknowledged by theaters. Uh, always do everything mobile first, and um, uh, you don't want to use people's data. Okay. Did you have another example, Man? Yes, I, and then I wanted to show you a little GIF example. Oh, yeah, here for example, we have another um, merchandise promotion, which is also funny, of course, and it's a quotation of a, um, of, uh, a show, of course, and again, you can, of course, use it to promote the next dates of the shows. 
Um, I wanted to, to show these little gifts of the advent calendar, mm -hmm. um, yep. which is which is funny. Uh, this is also um, forgive me if I uh, have too many German um, examples, but that's where I found some interesting stuff. Um, the Schaubühne every year in December makes a little um, advent calendar where you can. Uh, yes, it's games. It's it's funny little gifts and and a game, and you can win something. It's just um, yeah, to engage people and to count down until until um, Christmas. Um, and there are always uh, also the actors involved. So let's have a look <laughs> at this one. <laughs> no, this is this is not an actor, an actress. This is a, a member of a of the company. Um, it's just doors opening and some, then somebody showing uh, something. This, uh, in this case, she's showing uh, what you can win uh, if you are the first one to open this little door. <laughs> um, and that is uh, something really big because it's a membership uh, of the Friends of the Schaubühne, uh, which is uh, quite, um, quite nice to win something like that, a uh, membership for one year. And um, just to underline this example, um, it is a wonderful example of, um, first of all, using creativity. Um, playing on the word a door um, mm -hmm. because in Germany with the advent calendar um, when you open up um, uh, this little piece of paper for each day it's called the little door um, so they made a play on words first of all which uh, which is just very cute and funny um, and second of all they're using humans um, so it's always uh, very good to show as many uh, people as you can uh, the human side um, so not just the actors but um, for example, stage managers, uh, fans, audience members, etc. Um, and this also goes without saying that um, this kind of thing uh, requires a lot of creativity, but not that much money. Right. <laughs> so it's a very low budget um, <laughs> way to uh, really experiment with these media. Mm -hmm. Can we just quickly go back to uh, one thing on the um, Residenztheater um, that I wanted to show? Mm -hmm. One moment. And it's about um, combining, um, yes, a, a, a backstage story or showing daily life in theater and also funny things in theater with the promotion of, a, of, of the next shows. Um, so now we'll just go to the main yes. page of Residence Theater. Yes, and I'll scroll down to it. Uh, let's see where we are. I hope I'll find it quickly. So, otherwise, meanwhile, at least enjoy these great photos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really do an amazing job. And as you can see, this is really, um, this is professional level uh, in photography. Yeah, but also, this is obviously a behind the scene snapshot. Um, I'm here. Ah, this is quite <laughs> nice. This was uh, a photo taken <laughs> backstage um, somewhere um, behind the stage. And it is a quotation from uh, the show by Chekhov Ivanov. You are going on my nerves. And of course, somebody put it there because he was really upset with something. But it's, <laughs> it's of, of course, quite nice to show um, first off um, what's going on behind the scenes really in daily life in theater. <laughs> and then to use it as a promotion, uh, here it says, um, it show starts uh, on June 4th. So um, this is a very good example thing, mm. I think, of uh, <laughs> combining these, these two things and really to be open and approachable to, to the public. Yes, and as you can see, um, I highly doubt that this was planned, um, but rather <laughs> that somebody <laughs> uh, literally hung this up as a message to their um, coworkers, hey guys, you're all getting on my nerves, yeah. um, and that they then uh, use this on social media. Uh, again, this kind of moment um, uh, is, of course, suitable for Instagram, um, but th this is the kind of moment that you really find on Snapchat. Um, because you know, maybe maybe it's offensive. Maybe it's um, just a little too much, a little too uh, uh, 
too much of a look behind the scenes. Um, so for this kind of content, you could also imagine doing this uh, uh, as part of a Snapchat story. Yes, and then I um, want to show you one uh, example from the National Theatre in London. Uh, we don't have it? Um, yes, uh, which example? Is, or maybe, maybe we can show this um, example with, uh, um, uh, with the, the photograph. Yeah, that's the all the, the Manchester International. Yes, from Manchester. Yeah. The uh, Manchester yes. International Photo uh, uh, Festival. Um, excuse me, um, did a great um, yes, kind of a puzzle of a photo, which is um, very unusual and uh, yes, makes an, a huge impression. They're doing it in general also a very good job on Instagram. Here we are. Yeah, and um, also I want to point out that. Um, we have many, many links. Um, so what we'll do um, after the video, um, we can edit it and um, basically in the comment field have many, many links. Um, as I said, we tried to edit it down to just the very best examples um, uh, because of this uh, Google Hangouts on air problem. Um, but yeah, feel free to discover um, more and more links and um, send us your recommendations. Uh, the more, the better. <laughs> okay. So here you see uh, one big picture that has been cut down to to several um, pictures to and and put into Instagram, and the interesting thing is that they started with with one with the feet, um, and uh, posted it as a as a teaser, uh, and uh, the text says, "We'll be making it a, a very special announcement this morning." <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, again uh, a sort of storytelling where you tease something you don't know what's going to happen and then you step by step tell the rest of the story and it's uh, also visually it's it's amazing i think it's 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 very um capturing <laughs> yeah so this is the second step um so you can imagine uh, what an effect this has when you see uh the pictures going uh, one by one in your instagram feed yes so that's basically the the instagram um examples that we have as amy said we will send around uh, some interesting links and but feel free to to really explore what the others do and it's uh and, and find your own um ideas of uh, going through the theater with open eyes and find little stories that are hidden everywhere <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, it was, yeah, it's a wonderful message, Mara. Um, thank you. Um, I can't see if we have any questions. Um, there might be a bit of a mix up because the first live stream um, wasn't quite working. I'll just um, quickly check if we have any. Um, and if we did and we couldn't address them, then I'm very sorry. Um, I can't quite. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, in any case, Take, us, take your questions, um, <laughs> go exploring, um, check out Snapchat, check out Instagram, send us your favorites, um, and then, uh, yeah, and hopefully um, at a later date um, and as part of the project, um, you can actually start using these tools um, uh, in, in your daily work in the theater. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do have questions about these, these tools, we're always happy to answer. Um, because a lot of these things just require practice. Um, yeah. When we say that it's low budget, it's cost effective, um, that's true on the one hand. On the other hand, it takes time. Um, so you need to find the time to get to know these tools. Um, time and also just uh, interacting with other people. So as I said, feel free to ask. Yes, uh, one more thing I want to add is, um, we cannot show this now, but there is um, there was an experiment on Snapchat um, going on, um, the Residencia de Munich did a, a guest performance in Vienna, and uh, this performance was accompanied by um, by a social media journalist, and she did Snapchats uh, or snaps, as you say, um, uh, before and during the performance. That is, she took little videos, she took little um, interviews with the director and with the, with the audience after the performance that is actually sort of a those sort of doing um, yes uh, a, a, a TV reportage on snapchat 
it's, it's journalism actually what, what you did uh, in a very short form and uh, unfortunately we, I cannot show it to you. I, I can send around the link but it's in German uh, because she uh, documented it um, although it is Snapchat that cannot be recorded but she tried to. So this is an example of what you can do with Snapchat. Um, uh, another example is um, by the National Theatre London, I cannot show this to you, um, unfortunately, as well. I found it in, on Instagram, it was simply the logo of Snapchat uh, that they posted, and uh, the text said, um, see the full uh, rehearsal um, of today on our Snapchat channel, and, uh, and a link to that. So, um, a cross posting on Instagram mm -hmm. to the ongoing uh, live uh, streaming on um, on Snapchat. So this is the way it now starts to um, to interact uh, Snapchat and with these other channels. Um, but as Amy said, it's just uh, it's a medium that is not used often. And I talked to some social media managers that they told me that they found it not suitable for their theater because it's just too um, young, too, um, yes, a bit kitschy or not serious enough or whatever. So um, you have to find out for yourself if you think it's suitable for your profile and for the image that you want to create of your theater. Yeah, and that's really why we're here today, um, so that you can uh, learn about these media. Um, let's say your theater is more traditional, um, but you're doing a new uh, high-level project um, addressing younger people. Maybe that's a time to just do Snapchat um, for this one project. Mm -hmm. um, the whole idea behind social media is that you can um, basically reflect the personality, the DNA of the theater um, using the new channel. Um, that is always uh, the difficulty uh, in finding that, that voice online um, because you also have to, uh, as we said, adapt it a little bit for each channel. Um, yeah, so I think we can conclude um, the session. Yeah. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, a number of you were here. Um, yeah, and uh, as we said, send us any questions you might have. Um, we hope you learned something. Um, if and you we'll have more questions, yeah. uh, let us know and we'll explore them also in the next part of the series um, where, where we really get into the day-to-day -day -day work of um, actually juggling all these accounts and um, creating content, adapting it, et cetera. Yes, and I would be glad to, to keep in touch with you um, also um, outside this more official webinar <laughs> date um, so you know where you can find and address me at any time and uh, it would be great to 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 exchange ideas and to um, stay in touch about all this uh, communication um, that you're doing also for the European Theatre Lab projects of mm -hmm. course mm -hmm. but uh, on any other project that you want to promote. So um, please uh, feel free to, to stay and keep in touch. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day.